what do you think? <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's cheap. Don't get me wrong, it's cheap. It feels cheap. It ain't quality. However, how it makes me feel is quality. I will also show you the back. I've already filmed this intro, but then I had to scrap it because I realized I had something on my face. But I have already filmed this intro and I have already done the whole turnaround and shown you the back of this. So I'm gonna just use that clip for this because I can't be bothered to get up again. I really can't. At least not until I move to the bed and start reading One Piece, of course. But yes, hi, welcome or welcome back to How To Know Gavin. I am reading more One Piece in this video. I'm so excited. Honestly, I have been working myself to the bone for the past few months actually and I've been feeling really sick. Actually after the little garden arc video I did actually start to feel symptoms during that video. I just hit it well but then as soon as I finished filming that video I just became so ill. Now I feel absolutely great. I don't have any illnesses anymore however I do feel sick is in just in general. And you know what I've been looking forward to the most that I know will bring me absolute joy is reading One Piece. The next One Piece arc. It's all I've been looking forward to. Knowing that I had this video coming up was just, it's what's got me through the first part of November. In order for me to be happy these days, I have to be reading One Piece. I don't know what that says about me, but that's just the facts. So I will be starting the Drum Island arc in this vlog. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you know how many people told me in the comments of not just the last video, but a few videos before as well, how excited people are for me to get to Drum Island because people love the Drum Island arc. And I'm so excited to see what all the fuss is about. Drum Island arc, it is volumes 15 through 17 of the One Piece manga. And it's also chapters 130 through 154. So I do have quite a bit of chapters to go through. Actually, this is the longest arc that I've done a video for. I have done all of East Blue Saga as one video. But this one has 25 chapters, which is more than the Reverse Mountain arc, which I read a few weeks back and really enjoyed. It's also longer than the Whiskey Peak arc that I did and the Little Garden arc that followed. So this is most definitely going to be a longer video than the previous videos because I have 25 chapters I'm going to be talking about. This is currently the format that I enjoy making these videos. I'd like to come in and tell you my thoughts on each chapter. That might change in the future. I do know that the Alabaster arc is over 60 chapters long. <laughs> We're going to cross every time we get to it the end of this month but for the minute I do really love the way I, I do it. I, I find it fun and I'm going to try and make it fun for you guys as well. I did also mention that I want to watch the anime too of the arcs and I got a lot of responses that were fantastic and great feedback so it turns out I might not do the anime arcs as well because yeah a lot of people said that'll be a lot of One Piece that will be calling for a burnout and we do not want no One Piece burnouts in these videos. Oh no. So a lot of people did say to finish the manga first catch up and then watch the anime. I will say I have watched the first 26 episodes of the anime. I believe it was the first 26. And I do really enjoy it. I do see why people think I shouldn't try and overdo it though because it is a, a lot. There is a, a bit of repetition and yeah I was like this is great to refresh my memory on the East Blue Saga because it has been a couple of months now. But if I did read the whole arc and then watch the arc that would probably be a little bit too much. You guys are correct. So I will probably do some videos on the anime in the future but for now we're sticking to the manga. I'm so sorry. So it is quite late in the UK right now. It is... 11 p.m. So I'm going to settle down. I want to start reading the Drum Island arc. I'm so excited. Honestly, this is like bringing me so much joy. I am um, just, I just want to read One Piece all the time. <laughs> Honestly, when you find something that brings you joy, grab it by the balls and don't let go. However, before I do start this arc and I do my chapter by chapter review, if you are new to my channel, hi, thank you so much for checking my channel out. But I haven't read One Piece before. This is my first time reading through One Piece. So please no spoilers for the future. When this video goes up, I will have read up to the Drum Island arc. So please feel free to leave all the information, all of the things you want to tell me about One Piece leading up to the Drum Island arc in the comments. That would be fantastic. I am still a total noob. So thank you so much for your patience. I do appreciate it. However, you do not need to be patient any longer. Let's get into the Drum Island arc. Ah! Just me and the boys reading One Piece, aren't we? <laughs> oh, I just finished the first chapter. I think I'm going to get the icy setting that I wanted. I mentioned this, I think it was in the Whiskey Peak video, that I really wanted a place that has a really wintry setting. I think that's where we're heading because at the end of the chapter, there was snow. There was snow. I love me some snow. Anyway, I wanted to update you long before this, but as soon as I finished the chapter, 
there was people playing music so loudly outside that if I had tried to film, I would have gotten a copyright strike. So I finished the chapter and then I had to wait. <laughs> I had to wait for it to finish. Anyway, it stopped now, thank God. But yeah, so we left off the little god knock with Nami getting really ill and I had no idea what was going on. It looked like she had a fever and her fever, she's got 104 degrees which is incredibly high. So I'm terrified for Nami because no one has a doctor on board. We don't have a doctor yet in the crew. So I think the next person we recruit has to be a doctor. So that's what I'm hoping for when they get to, I, I think it's Drum Island where they're going to. They haven't seen it yet. There is this big cyclone that they've avoided. And then the end of the chapter is Zoro going, hey guys, take a look. Is that somebody standing out there? scary scary yet again we keep having moments like this where or like very ominous lines where it's just a little bit terrifying so i hope it's not scary here oh what the hell is that i just looked at the next page of the next chapter there were some moments that i really enjoyed out of this chapter. it was actually a really exciting chapter a lot happened we did have Nami fallen ill. We had the guys on board like being really concerned for Nami, which was just so sweet and so nice to see them do that. And it's also like kind of funny as well because they just don't understand. And somehow, was it Luffy and Usopp or was it Sanji and Usopp? They both said they've never been sick before. And they were like, does it hurt? And even Vivi's like, are you people even human? Like, what the hell? Oh wait, no, Luffy is the one who asked, does it hurt to be sick? And then Sanji and Usopp say, don't know, I've never been sick. Like, are they human? <laughs> like, yeah, that's the thing, is that they just cross boundaries, don't they? They're not quite human. They're not superhuman. Also, how attractive is Sanji in this bit? I can't say if you can actually say it. But he has snot coming down his face because he's that concerned for Nami. I also love Sanji going, Nami, please don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that badly. We do still have the eternal pose and that's where they're heading. And I love the fact that Zoro was kind of put in charge with steering the ship and he hasn't been looking at the eternal pose. He's actually just been looking at a cloud. He's been following a cloud. Come on, Zoro. <laughs> like, poor Nami, like, even though she's sick, she is still the best navigator. She is still just so passionate about her craft of seafaring that she has to take over, even though she desperately needs a doctor. We do also find out that Alabaster is properly in trouble in the newspaper as well. A lot of the Royal Army in Alabaster have moved to the Rebel Army in Alabaster, which means war is imminent. So it's crucial that they get to Alabaster quick. What was so great about Vivi is that even though she finds this out, the main priority right now is to get Nami to a doctor. It looked like Vivi was about to say straight on to Alabaster, full speed, do what you can to get there, even though it could potentially take a week. But she doesn't say that. She instead says, so let's look for an island with a doctor as soon as possible. If you want to get to Alabaster, we need to get Nami well so we can get there faster. Yeah, because literally Nami is so fantastic at navigating and she is the best person to get them to Alabaster, 100%. So if Nami is ill if she's sick then how are they gonna do it because it did look like Vivi was about to say fuck Nami let's just go to Alabaster even if it takes a week but no she goes to comedy I was like, I love Vivi I'm really loving Vivi and I'm loving her development honestly even though she's the newest crew member I just absolutely adore the fact that she would be so selfless for Nami even though her entire country is in jeopardy Great characterization right there. Also, I love the cover story of chapter 130, Maximum Speed, because we have Django and we have Usopp's security force. And you know how much I've missed them? I have missed those little guys. They were one of the highlights of the Sarah Village arc. In all honesty, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Sarah Village arc, but the little kids who looked up to Usopp and they were his like little team. I miss them. I thought they were fantastic. And seeing them in the cover story, <laughs> chasing Django is hilarious. I love that so much. However, I just want to know if Nami's going to get better. I, I need her to be better right now. Oh, I thought we were dealing with more clowns. And I was like, another one? Another one? I am trying to like the clowns more. Fortunately, it wasn't though. It wasn't. It was more like a jester kind of character. There is somebody that seemingly is standing in the middle of the ocean and it's just like the weirdest exchange between Luffy, the, the straw hats, and this weird person in the middle of the ocean. Will you leave my toast alone? My cats are conspiring to take my toast off me. You need to stop. 
I haven't finished. Yeah, so they're just having like this really like weird exchange. He's like, it's cold, isn't it? <laughs> sure, it's cold. And I was just like, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, pff, out of nowhere, the ship comes. He's actually standing on top of a ship. And the ship comes up. I'm starting to think, did Pirates of the Caribbean also steal ideas from One Piece? Did it? Because I feel like the horror movie Saw took some inspiration from, I think, parts of the Little Garden arc. And now I think Pirates of the Caribbean has taken some inspiration from One Piece itself. Because, yeah, it was an incredible moment, though, when you see the ship just come up. And, yeah, it's, like, under the ocean, but it just rises. Like, that's so good. But this Captain Wap Wapol of Tin is so weird. He is so weird. He's eating a knife, and then he starts eating the ship, and then he eats Luffy. <laughs> like, this was bizarre. Bizarro. Are they just, like, a one-chapter deal? Because it looks like Luffy's blasted Wapol away. Like, he's... He was inside his mouth, <laughs> ew. And yeah, he uses his abilities to rocket launch Wapol. And I think that might be the end of him. He just, he goes flying. It seems like such a weird thing on this way to Drum Island. So I don't have much to say about this chapter, just that it was just so bloody weird. Oh my God, I just did my review and I forgot to click record. <laughs> I did not do that. This vlog, honestly, I had to film the intro twice. I've just... <laughs> okay, let's do this again. <laughs> it's now like one o'clock in the morning. <sighs> so firstly, I was half right, I think, about how Wapol's crew, this might be the last we see of them. Wapol was launched into the sea. He has had a devil fruit. So who knows if he actually survives that. But his crew says, remember us. We'll get you for this, just you wait. And a lot of people in my comments do tell me, make sure that you pay attention to characters, make sure you remember people and things, because things do come back. And I feel like the whole remember us, remember me, you remember this, remember us, that whole kind of repetition of that means that I have to remember them too. So I will. I will do my best to remember them, I promise. And they will probably come back. When? I don't actually know. But yeah, we have come across a snow... I see island, a, a winter island. And Luffy's face was literally my face when I saw that we were on a winter island. I love anything to do with winter in that kind of thing. This was the moment I was waiting for. The moment I was waiting for. I already done all of this reaction. I'm so sad I didn't click record. But yes, they come across Drum Island. The people there don't like pirates. They hate pirates. And... Sometimes I don't blame them. However, they do shoot and poor Vivi gets shot. I was actually quite shocked at that. I mean, she says it's just a scratch. But yeah, they wouldn't let them on the island at first, on Drum Island. But then they've changed their minds. They've changed their minds because, well, Luffy was a little bit hot-headed, but Vivi made him calm down a bit. And it's meant that they will actually get allowed to visit the Doctor. But then they say that the Doctor's a witch. The Doctor is a witch, and that's interesting. I love witches in normal media. I just don't know how witches are in One Piece. I don't know the form they take. I don't know if they cast magic spells or if they have black cats and ride broomsticks. I don't know. However, witches are some of my favourite supernatural creatures, beings of all time. I love me a good witch. But I've no idea what is going on. And I don't know... Is a witch going to join the, the Straw Hats? Because they do need a doctor desperately. And they only have one on this island. So I feel like maybe, maybe they can't take this witch. They can't take this doctor. But I could be wrong, I don't know. I'm excited to find out what form this witch takes. Because I just love witches. Right, I'm definitely recording this time. Definitely. Oh my gosh, this chapter had so many different things going on for it. I really enjoyed this chapter. Firstly, is the witch Santa? Is the witch Santa, because she has a sleigh and she lives on top of a mountain and nobody really gets to see her because she comes down when she feels like it. I love her. I love this witch already. She sounds like me. If I was a doctor, I would do the same thing. I would just come down when I feel like it. I would treat whoever I needed treated in that moment and take what I wanted and leave. That's what I would do. So I already respect her, love her, worship the ground she walks on. Lots to love, lots to love. And I mean, firstly, I mean, this is the start of the next chapter. I haven't read the next chapter, but the opening illustration is Kaya. She's now a doctor's apprentice and doing fine. 
I love that for her. Honestly, I miss Kaya. She was another highlight from the Syrup Village arc, in all honesty. She was so good. Really enjoyed her as a character. And she's doing fine. But that is the, the chapter header for the next chapter. Sorry, I should talk about chapter 133. Which, again, had so much going for it. We meet Captain Dalton, who reveals to us that this drum island a drum kingdom I think he called it had a king and there were pirates and one of them was called Blackbeard I was like Blackbeard the Blackbeard and they kind of overthrew the king and the king was Wapol the pirate king person that we just had before so that information has already come back but I still feel like it's not the last we've seen of them but yeah Wapol that was a bit of a surprise bit of a revelation at the end there honestly he's just a weird looking thing he really is I like his design in a way but it j he's so unnerving like why is the shape of his mouth like a lantern and I know he's had a devil fruit as well but like He's just strange, okay? He's just so strange. But the main story of this is still trying to get a doctor for Nami. And so Luffy and Sanji are going to take Nami up the mountain. And Dalton warns them, don't go up that way because there are, what was it, flesh-eating rabbits? What was it? Yeah, vicious flesh-eating rabbits. <laughs> I love that response. Luffy's just like, we're in a hurry, we can handle them. And Sanji's like, yeah, we'll kick him. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like that's going to be a decision that bites them in the ass. They should have listened to Dalton because it sounds like they're not going to be able to handle these rabbits at all. I don't know who they're trying to kid. Look, they've not been known for their best decision making. So it's going to be interesting and probably hilarious to see them come across these flesh-eating rabbits. Flesh-eating rabbits. I love this world so much. Oh my gosh, my, one of my favourite moments from this chapter, it's so funny, is they get Nami inside and before we even know about the witch and where she lives, Dalton tells them to look out the window. It's just Sanji and Nami in this room. But when Dalton points to the window, there's a big snowman right in front of it blocking the view and that's because Usopp and Luffy have been building these huge snowmen and <laughs> it's just like you guys are gonna get it <laughs> like it's now really the time to build huge snowmen and in right in front of where they need to see the actual bloody mountain still as funny as ever my favorite chapter so far in this arc so many revelations. Love it. And it's just a chapter as well, but I just feel like you could get so much from it. I feel like that might be the last chapter that I can read tonight, though. I'm so tired now, and I need to get my boys to bed. So it is quite late for them, and it is past their bedtime. So we're going to call it a night, and I'm going to be dreaming about One Piece, and we're going to get back to this tomorrow, and I'm going to spend my Sunday nice and chill with One Piece and all in a nice hot coffee, especially since this is cold and it's a winter island and I'm gonna get all cozy up. Oh, it just sounds so good. Okay, I'm excited to wake up now. Tomorrow's gonna be a fantastic day. All I've been doing this morning was playing God of War Ragnarok. I should have focused on reading One Piece, but I mean, it's not that late actually. It's still only like midday. So it's fine. I finally read chapter 134. I feel like having Luffy and Sanji climb the mountain with Nami was like the worst idea they could have thought of. Especially since now, and obviously they didn't know this, but the witch is actually in the next town over, so she's not even up the mountain. And Luffy and Sanji are just completely ignoring the fact that there are these flesh-eating rabbits. And there are these huge ones as well that they've come across, and they're like, oh, they must be polar bears. I wonder if they're okay. Like, do they listen to anyone? <laughs> and even during the whole, like, little attack of the littler rabbits that they're just, like, kicking around, they're just talking normally. They're talking about random stuff while all of this is happening, like, they're just not taking it seriously. I love it. I'm starting to see the plot of the Drum Island arc form as well. I think what we're heading towards is that Wapol, who we've just fought before, he is fine and well, by the way, he is trying to find Drum Island. He's trying to return because he was the king there, even though he abandoned them. He's now trying to find his way back there, but for probably malicious intent. I don't think he has a good bone in his body right now. So I think the plot of Drum Island is that we're going to fight Wapol and his crew and also recruit a medic, a doctor. And we do meet the witch. She is very weird. 
She is very, very weird. She is 139 years old. She does have the look of a witch almost. She does have like a little bit of a longer nose, a bit of a pointy chin. I think there was a wart on her face as well. Like she does kind of look like a witch. And she also has a reindeer called Chopper. Yeah, Tony Tony Chopper. I think her name is Dr. Cura. I think that's how you pronounce it because if you're healing people, you're curing them. So Dr. Cura, but I could be totally wrong. I could be totally wrong on that. But that was my logic there on how to pronounce the witch's name, Dr. Cura. But yeah, she has a, a beloved reindeer called Chopper. And this Chopper will defend Dr. Cura while she is bleeding the townspeople dry. You know, she helps a young kid because he fell over and she helps him. But then she's like, I'll have half your assets and I'll have garbage bags and all this, that and the other. And everyone's like, wait, what the hell? You didn't even really do anything. <laughs> but she's like, I'm going to take it. And Chopper is like, you're gonna do it. You're gonna listen to it. Django is on his way to the most popular destination of the East Blue, Mirrorball Island. Why did we not go to Mirrorball Island? Explain that to me because Mirrorball Island, it looks so fun. It looks so much fun. I think I've just met my new favorite character. My heart, Robson White Walkie. Oh, look at him. And this Waphole fella, it's getting on my nerves. I hate him. My heart broke. Wapo was like, are you still upset because I killed your brothers? Like, what? Uh, and look at the little, look at his little face. Oh, he's not, not. Oh, oh that was, uh, that was something. Honestly, every now and then I do get a bit of a curveball. Least expected, least expected curveballs where it's just, you know, a random character has been introduced who I really connect with. Even if they seem so minute, they just mean the world. But yes, Wapol is now in Drum Island and he's headed for the village and he's killed some security people. And Dalton is like MIA at the minute because he's helping Vivi and Usopp try to reach the witch because the witch isn't where she's supposed to be. And Luffy, Sanji and Nami are in danger. And it's just all a mess right now. And I'm living for it. Like how quickly we can get from being just so normal and we're all fine and well. And then the next minute, everything is just gone tits up, essentially. The sort of fight with the Lapins was so fun because Luffy can't really fight back because Nami is attached to him. So if he fights, then she could potentially get hurt. So Sanji's like, don't fight the Lapins. You just run run and Sanji's trying to fight them but also run as well and that whole fiasco which is what I'm going to call it it's a fiasco a lot of the plans from the straw hats are just fiascos and seeing these huge rabbits <laughs> is I mean it's a little bit scary because they are flesh eaten apparently and as bonkers as that is seeing them and how cute they actually do kind of look to be fair they're still trying to harm our protagonists and we still want Nami to get better so yeah it was just it was a funny moment so Wapol's two friends you know the jester character I mentioned a few chapters back his name is Chess and he is the former drum kingdom evil chief of staff and there's also Kuru Marimo, who is the former Drum Kingdom evil magistrate. This chess fella though, he does, I, I think it's his design, honestly, like he has such a small head and a huge body and the whole jester kind of look is just unnerving. Anything, like jesters, clowns, I don't know what it is about them both, but they do get under my skin. Like I find chess more scary looking than Wapol. I do. And now Wapol's found Drum Island after months of looking, just as the Straw Hats have arrived. Like they could not have timed it better, could they? <laughs> I laughed out so loud when Vivi and Usopp were fighting and arguing and they're looking for the way to Gayasta, which is where the witch is. That's where she's gone. So Vivi and Usopp are on the way there and they're arguing. <laughs> <laughs> and they just go past the sign. They're like, we need to find this sign to guess it. All the while, they've already just gone past it. <laughs> it's nice to see everyone play a role in this. Apart from Zoro, like, I don't know where he is right now, but I hope he helps with Dalton because Dalton can't be dead. Dalton can't be dead. He fights against King Wapol. He starts turning into this 
wild beast. What I don't know what you call it. I don't know what you call it. It's somewhere in my head. But he gets horns and hooves and he's about to attack. But then he gets impaled three times. Now I'm trying not to take this at face value because whenever I think someone's dead, it turns out they're not. Like Dory in the little garden arc, it looked like he had died. And I honestly thought he had because of that blood rushing up and everything. Like, I'm still so surprised he didn't die, but like, I'm so happy he didn't. But with this one, with Dalton, I really hope he isn't dead. That would just tear my heart out, in all honesty. Like, he loves Drum Island. He tries to defend it. He tells Wapol that he is a terrible king because he abandoned his people and he wanted him to come to his senses, but he never did. So now he has to go. But no, Wapol gets him impaled. I wouldn't be happy if he's dead. Not when he's just started to defend the kingdom. I want him to fight alongside Zoro to defend Drum Island. That's what I want. I'm sure I tell you my wish list of what I want to happen in these arcs all the time and they never happen. And that's fine. But I would love to see Zoro help Dalton fight and defend Drum Island and protect the people. That would be so nice. But I feel like we're still early on in the arc and I can't believe like quite a lot has already happened. And I think I've only read like what five or six chapters so far? Wow. You know what else I find really creepy as well? Are these doctors? What the hell? They, they look so creepy. This was actually called the Great Medical Land of Drum, but all the doctors were pretty much put in the castle, or the elite doctors were put in the castle with Wapol, and then Wapol would kind of hold the, the sick people hostage because they didn't have access to the doctors. So he was a very tyrannical ruler. But it's interesting that we were in dire need of a doctor at the start of this arc, and they happen to come across the island of Drum, which is the medical island. Oh yeah, there were only 20 doctors here and they all worked in the castle research laboratory. All the other doctors were expelled from the country and it's a land of advanced medical science. So we need to see if there's any more doctors. I need to know who is gonna be joining the Straw Hats because I don't think it's gonna be the witch. Uh, uh, she would be a pretty cool kind of companion. She does seem to be a little, maybe a little bit too odd, which I guess, would fit in quite well with the Straw Hats, I don't know. But yeah, they do need a doctor stat. I want Nami to feel better. She's still ill. She's still ill. I need her to, to get better ASAP. Yeah, I finished volume 15 now, so I'm gonna go on to volume 16. I'm gonna make myself a coffee and continue reading One Piece. It's genuinely making me feel better. Like, the soul. Like, this is healing my soul. All the stress that I've been having recently is just evaporating. I mean, I'll get stressed again once I finish the arc and I have to go on to other things. But for now, let's not think about that. Let's just continue the Drum Island arc. At the end of the previous chapter, there was an avalanche, which I forgot to mention. I keep saying doing these chapter by chapter reviews means I will always be more in depth and I'll not forget anything. <laughs> I forgot to tell you the most important thing that happened in the chapter, which was the avalanche that started at the end. So the next chapter was very high stakes and very action packed because of that and I love chaos. I love it when everything's a bit chaotic and with this avalanche headed towards the village, everything is in chaos. Even King Wapol has to like run. So a lot of this chapter was just running away from all of that snow and again, I'm just loving the atmosphere of it. I seriously am. I love how cold it is. I love the snow. I love the snowy mountains. I love the avalanche. I love everything in the whole village and the way it looks and it kind of almost looks like power plants almost, you know, the mountains, like from The Simpsons or something. They have a really weird shape and I love how weird and imaginative it is. But yeah, this avalanche does come and Luffy does something that I think will help him in the future. Like he does a good deed towards the Lapins and with King Wapol now on Luffy's tail, I think, this is why I think, <laughs> that the Lapins will come to protect Luffy maybe. I just think Luffy doing a good deed or anyone doing a good deed in the One Piece series usually is something that they get rewarded for. And I think him pulling out one of the lapins from the snow and helping it while it's baby lapin, I think it is, like the, the really small rabbit, flesh eating rabbit again. I have to remember these are flesh eating rabbits. When Luffy pulled out the, I think the parent to the, the child, and I think that action will be a really good thing for Luffy in the future. I think he's done something really good there. Even though he should have probably left it because they were trying to kill them. But at the same time, Luffy just has the biggest heart. And seeing him do that was just so nice. And I was just like, bless you. Hopefully it doesn't bite him in the ass. Hopefully that Lapin does 
end up helping instead of trying to hurt him still. Because again, like every single obstacle seems to be thrown at the Straw Hats trying to get Nami to be better. And so they just can't catch a break right now. I love the Wooly Hippo factoid little thing there as well. I just love it when Oda just takes two seconds out of his day to explain some of the creatures or the world to us and having those little panels are sometimes just so... Like, I just love how much it builds to the world. White walkie or woolly hippo factoid. It's just so cool. It's just a little bit of information that, you know, may or may not come in handy in the future. It's just nice to know. It is just nice to know. I would love, and I don't know if maybe there is something like this out there, I would love a One Piece world guide. I would love that so much. I mean, I wouldn't be able to read all of it or even read any of it because I just would be worried of spoilers from opening the first page. But I would love something that just explores the world and every single island and place that we visit in One Piece. I would just love something like that. Let me know if there is something like that that exists. I will buy it. I'll just not open it until I, I've caught up. And also, oh, no... No, this is a bad sign. When there is a load of black pages, that usually means there's going to be backstory. And nine times out of ten, the backstory makes me cry. So I have backstory coming up. I don't think it's in the next chapter. It's in a few chapters, I think. But I can just say it. I can just say it from just looking at the pages on the side here, that there is a lot of black pages. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to get emotional, isn't it? Oh, okay. Getting emotional was not on the agenda order. Should I just skip those chapters? I won't, I promise. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like, oh, but Dalton, I need to know what happened to Dalton. Is he dead? He can't be dead. He can't be dead. Anyway, gonna carry on. Next chapter is called The Summit. And Django is still in disguise. He's still getting himself around. I wonder how long it's gonna take before he gets caught. I wonder if he'll get caught in this arc, you know, like with the chapter headings in, in the illustrations. Will he get caught? That's the question. Part of me hopes he doesn't because I'm really enjoying watching him kind of escape the Marines and escape detection and the disguises he's going to, you know, come across and, and do and the places he goes. I love it. It's so funny. I cannot help but be in absolute awe of Luffy in this chapter. He bleeds in order to get Sanji and Nami up the mountain to the castle to the doctor that's not even there. <laughs> but no, we had an exciting end as well because it looks like... I think his name was Chopper, or it might be a different reindeer. Oh wait, no, the next chapter is called Enter 2020 Chopper. So I think it's the same Chopper that we met before. So the witch might be there now, maybe. I don't know, I'll, I'll find out. But yeah, Luffy manages to get all the way up to the top of the mountain with Sanji unconscious, with Nami unconscious, and he's bleeding and he just gets them up there. I'm just, I'm in awe. I am in absolute awe that he just went through all of this to get them to the top of the mountain. And he had to fight the Lapins. He had to run away from King Wapol and survive that. And it was kind of a, a cool little side battle really because the snow is so white and they can kind of blend in with the snow. And <laughs> King Wapol's mouth being, well, almost looking like a cave entrance as well. That was a close call, Luffy. I feel bad for the Straw Hats. They're kind of split up right now. Two of them are unconscious. And Luffy is trying his best to save his friends. And he's in a foreign country where the ways of the place, the atmosphere, the snow, that's all new to him. And it's working against him. And he's still managing to do it. And he's still managing to continue going forward and to protect his friends. Oh, every chapter I read of One Piece makes me love Luffy more. It really does. But the poor Lapins though, they did end up defending Luffy, which is what I predicted. But I think they might be dead now. Again, I can't tell you whether or not this death is sticking or if they're just actually unconscious or not. I hope they're just unconscious, but they defend Luffy and it's so sweet. It's so nice. It's nice to see Luffy be able to affect people around him. It could be the strangest of creatures and he can still show kindness to them and they will show kindness back. You know, it's like this whole balance thing and it's beautiful. And then you have someone like King Wapo coming along and... <sighs> ruins everything. They better not be dead. Otherwise, King Wapol might be one of my most hated characters ever. Honestly, he's, he's getting there. I don't even know who my most hated character is. Like, who is my most hated? I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think on that. 
but I should probably start considering it. I can tell you all my favourite characters because I just love so many, but when I mean like actual hate this person so much, I don't know if I can think of anyone off the top of my head. I feel like everyone served pretty much a purpose, even villains and antagonists. They just always have some kind of other dimension to them, which means I don't exactly hate them, hate them, but I dislike them, but I'm supposed to, you know? Anyway, it was a really good chapter. Definitely Luffy's time to shine. And shined he did. Sean he did. Shined. Sean. And he's Sean. <laughs> Yay! Nami's better again. Thank God. The fever, the illness that she suffered was caused by a little insect from the little garden arc. So it's very realistic in an unrealistic world. And I love that. So it's very realistic in an unrealistic world. If she had waited two more days, she would have died. So it was very serious. If it hadn't been for Luffy and his perseverance, then she may not have made it. So I love that their friendship and the whole team, I, I can't wait for Nami to like be really away. I mean, she is awake now, but to be able to converse with Luffy and Sanji and like move around and stuff and talk about it, it'll be great to see how their friendship goes to the next level. I've got a few favourite moments from this because some of it was quite comedic. In Zoro, I totally forgot. He went on a midwinter swim and I totally forgot about that. Like he had just done it and we hadn't seen him since. And it turns out that we have found him. He comes up from the snow and he's freezing. And look how happy he is when he gets the coat from the guy he punches in the face. <laughs> like Zoro can go from being like really cute and wholesome one moment to savage the next. He would probably kill someone for a coat in all honesty. Usopp's face too is hilarious. But I will say though, when it's where it says, is it my imagination? I genuinely thought it said, is it my vagina? Is it my vagina? I genuinely thought that's what he said. I know that's not what he says, but that's what it looked like to me at first glance. In fact, there's a, a bigger panel of it before the next chapter. It does, it looks a little bit like, is it my vagina? I didn't say that I am, I just saw this a squiggle and then a gina. <laughs> so I thought it was, is it my vagina? Anyway, it was funny that Zoro couldn't tell Usopp until he saw his nose. Usopp's nose is still quite distinct. But the main thing about this chapter is that we've been properly introduced to Chopper. And Chopper, he ate the human human fruit. So anything a human can do, he can do better. So one second, he's tiny and he's almost getting cooked by Sanji and Luffy, like they want to eat him. And then the next minute he's huge and he can whack a punch. And I was wondering if it was the same person because at the end of the chapter, the previous chapter, when the chopper pulls them up, he looks quite big. And the reindeer that's been accompanying Dr. Kira has been quite big. So when we start to see this like tiny reindeer that has been helping Nami and Dr. Kira even says that he knows everything that she knows. It's very interesting. I feel like Chopper is probably going to be the one that will accompany them. Although it seems like he hates humans as well. Because when he talks to Nami, he says, Get lost, human. By the way, is your fever better? And also the fact that Luffy and Sanji want to eat him as well. Like, that's not. <laughs> that's not a good first impression. Even though Chopper did save them from the mountain. Also, Dr. Kira as well, when she talks to. Nami, that was quite intense when she says that her patients either leave fully recovered or dead. Because Nami's just like, let's get up. Come on, I feel better now. Let, let me get up. But no, she needs to stay. She needs to stay in bed for a few more days. But yeah, even she can flip a switch. In one minute, she seems to be quite normal. In the next, she seems quite crazy. Do I trust her completely? Probably not. She has helped. So I have to give her props for that. I still don't know what to make of her though, because she is weird. She is just really weird. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to maybe crying. Oh, Chopper, 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 Chopper. I knew some kind of heart-wrenching backstory will be coming. And we do get a little bit of it from Dr. Kira. She does tell them that he was rejected because he had a blue nose as a reindeer. He was called names. Very Rudolph. This is very Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Hey, his poor backstory as well. Oh, Rudolph's backstory just made me cry too. But yeah, even Chopper was rejected by his own family and he was always made to go last or like far behind the rest of the pack as they were moving. And it just, oh, to be rejected by your own parents as well, just because of your nose, it's just awful. And then he had some of the human human fruit and he couldn't even fit in with the humans either. Nobody wanted him there. And Dr. Kira did mention a doctor who took him in called Dr. Hiraluk. Although he used to be a quack apparently. So he was probably a little bit insane but i feel like we're gonna get some explanation as to why chopper hates humans i feel like that's coming in this big huge flashback 
that I can see. At least I think that uh, it has to be Chopper. He's the only character I can think of that needs a backstory right now. But now Luffy wants to recruit Chopper as well. And I will say I'm sure I have seen Chopper's design in a few group images just floating around online. I try not to look, but it's very hard not to. So I think he does end up joining the Straw Hats. Although it did look like they were going to recruit Dr. Kira at the start, even though Luffy kept calling her old lady and she has to whoop his ass to stop him from calling her old lady. She's still in my pit and perky 130s. And the recurring theme of Luffy and Sandy just chasing Chopper and Chopper's just running the way he is and they're behind him is just hilarious. It happened a few times in this, I think like three times. First to make him rain to SG, and then now they want to recruit him. And I felt so bad for Chopper as well when he overhears Luffy and Sanji talking about him being a monster. But then obviously because they don't have a lot of self-awareness and they are a bit tactless when it comes to talking to other people, that they say all of these things, so he's a monster, but then they're like, oh my god, he's so interesting, let's recruit him, and then they chase him again. It's hilarious. So this is pretty much all this chapter was based in. It's based in the castle, which I like the castle as a setting, and I feel like it was mainly to build up Chopper as a character. He looks quite powerful as well, actually. He looks, like, very strong. I think it'll be a fantastic addition to the straw hats, especially since Nami as well. She was trying to recruit him first, and she wants him to come along so that she doesn't have to spend three more days in bed so that she can join the Straw Hats, get on their way to Alabaster. Although I do feel like we, we still have a few chapters left of, of Drum Island, like quite a few. So I feel like Nami's still gonna have to be bed bound for now and they can't get to Alabaster just yet. We have King Wapol to worry about and his crew. And it seems like he is on his way up this mountain. So I feel like we have a battle imminent, but we need Zoro, Usopp and Vivi to reunite with the rest of our gang. But also Dalton, we still have Dalton to worry about too. Oh my gosh, so much happening. Django as well at the start of chapter 141. He has been discovered in disguise at the dance contest. To be fair, I don't think it's that much of a disguise, but <laughs> look at him go. Look at those moves. Right, it doesn't seem like we're getting just one backstory. It feels like we're getting a bit of a history lesson on Drum Island. However, we are focusing a lot on the doctor who took in Chopper called Dr. Hiraluk. Hiraluk. Hiraluk? <laughs> I think it's Dr. Hiraluk. And Dr. Hiraluk is considered a quack doctor. Nobody really wants to be his patient. He makes things worse. Definitely makes things worse. And then he comes across Chopper and looks after him in the cutest thing ever ever look at Chopper's face because he's been given food and shown kindness from somebody. It's my heart. My absolute heart. Just look at him with his little bandages. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, he's so cute. But yeah, not really much else to say other than this is a chapter that's starting the backstory. And even just a little bit before that, we do, f I think Dalton is dead. Because it says Dalton's heart has stopped beating, but at the same time, I'm like, do I really believe a word Oda says? Not really. I'm now more like 70% Shari's dead, which is more than what I was before. And King Wapol as well has reached the castle and there's going to be a fight between them. And just before we see that fight happen, and just before Luffy goes for that gum gum bullet, I think it's called the gum gum bullet, we start getting the backstory. I think it's a great time for the backstory as well on Drum Island in Drum Kingdom, because I feel like it will inform any kind of big fight between Wapol and Luffy and the Straw Hats that much more, because I do want to know more about this place. I want to know what happened with Wapol and why he's doing what he's doing. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see that unfold. But yeah, there's a lot of backstory. I don't think we're going to have too much of the Straw Hats in the next few chapters. So yeah, I think it'll just all be Wapol and his crew and the Drum Island inhabitants. Maybe Dalton as well. We'll see Dalton alive again. We'll see Chopper. We'll see Dr. Cure and all of that stuff. So yeah, I feel like we'll probably get more emotional tugging with Chopper. Because what has happened to Dr. Hiraluk? Has he abandoned Chopper? Did he die? Like, why is he not there anymore? So it'll be really interesting to see how that question is answered. And I'm just scared for Chopper, in all honesty. Uh, not a whole lot to say about this chapter, per se. I will say, though, that Chopper's become, like, the cutest character. And I took so many photos of cute Chopper moments. And I just feel like this is all I'm going to say about Chopper in the future. It's just how bloody cute he is. When Chopper gets his name... Oh, so cute! He's called Tony Tony Chopper because he's a Tonakai, a reindeer, and antlers that look like they could chop down trees. So that's why his name is Tony Tony Chopper, or just Chopper for short, I guess. And we do get more about King Wapol 
in his role as king on Drum Island in the Drum Kingdom and we see him go to like this meeting thing where Princess Phoebe's dad is but Princess Phoebe is also there and Wapol knocks into her and she's like sorry for bumping into you even though it was totally his fault and it just shows you from a young age just how amazing she is and how amazing she'll be as a leader and even Dalton because Dalton is alive and well in these flashbacks he notices this and that's why he kind of recognised Vivi when he first saw her. But she hasn't come clean about her identity. Well, I guess because Dalton is dead right now. I Please don't be dead. So that was a nice tie-in to the start of the arc and kind of the direction that I guess Oda was going in with this and how Vivi would be connected. And it's nice to see those connections, honestly. So great to see Vivi as a 10 year old just be so amazing. Like Vivi is becoming a character that I'm really caring for. And Chopper is as well, but that's because he's so cute. He's so good. I don't know why the doctor made Chopper go away at the end of the chapter though. Because it's been a year of them being together and they have a blast. Like they have so much fun together. Also while healing people and doing odd jobs and things like that. It looks so wholesome and so cute. But yeah, at the end of the chapter, the doctor tells Chopper to just go and leave. And Chopper doesn't want to leave, but the doctor forces him to. I don't know why. And he's crying at the end. The doctor's crying at the end. So I feel like there must be some ulterior motive there. There's some reason why he's cast him away. Because that's just so sad. Tell him never to come back but to also go to the sea. So we have the seed of Chopper wanting to explore and go on the sea and his first introduction to pirates here. And I don't know if I'm right or not, but I feel like that was to plant the seeds of his desire to join the Straw Hats later on so it doesn't just come out of nowhere. But all in all, pretty good chapter. Really enjoyed the VV past thing being connected to Drum Island in that way. And see more of Chopper, of course, because he's so cute. Oh, I don't like it. It's starting to hurt. The doctor's dying. That's why he kicked Chopper out. He didn't want him to see him die. Okay, a lot to unpack here. The doctor wants to bring cherry blossoms to Drum Island. So he wants to live long enough to do that. So he asks the help of Dr. Kira to do that. And she does help him get three weeks, I think it was, rather than being able to cure him completely because apparently that's impossible. But he was a ruffian back in the day. Dr. Hiraluk, he does have a shady past. And he came across cherry blossoms and they miraculously saved him. So that's been his life's mission to bring the cherry blossoms to his home island. It's so touching as well, how sweet that is. And the fact that Chopper just wants to help and he goes, well, after Chopper is kicked out of home, he finds a mushroom, a, a healing mushroom that will help too. And Dr. Hiraluk is like, you got that for me? And Chopper's like, yeah, I got that for you. Um, Oh, it's so, it's so nice. I feel so bad for Chopper as well. Why are reindeer dicks? Why? Like, bless, Chopper's just minding his own business, trying to get to this mushroom, and these reindeer just beat him up. Like, bullies, absolute bullies. I said before about characters that I hate, and I don't think I have any, I hate those reindeer. Poor Chopper, he's bleeding, he looks beaten up, and it's, oh, he was just minding his own business, and he didn't do anything. Ugh. I love Chopper so much now. Seeing him just so small with his little hat just walking along the snow. <laughs> I love the messages that Dr. Hiraluk imparts on Chopper as well, especially about the pirate flag as well. When a man hoists a pirate flag, there's nothing he can't do. Never forget that Chopper. With different characters in different locations we go to, there are different opinions on pirates. But I think one of the main things that we take from this is that Pirates can do anything and they are doing what they love. They're following their dreams, their passions. And I love that message. I love that theme because it applies to Luffy and the Straw Hats so much. And so having Chopper know this is a message that Dr. Hiraluk has given him. It's just fantastic. He's hoisting the skull and crossbones against every disease there is. Oh, there's just so much symbolism with that pirate flag. It's so... I honestly love the... Oh, it's gonna... It's gonna hurt, isn't it? It's gonna hurt. I might just stop here, just forever, because it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Dr. Hiraluk is gonna die. Chopper's gonna be devastated. I'm gonna be devastated. I can just feel it coming. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Okay. Okay. I was going to try and stop myself, but when I finish volume 16, I might crack open some wine. I feel like that's the only way I'll be able to handle. In fact, I might just get it now because I don't think Dr. Hiraluk has long to live. And I th it's Sunday. Why not? Let's let's crack open the wine. Let's get some wine. 
and cry. <laughs> I'm so glad I got the wine out. I was so shocked. <laughs> it's probably a small moment in the grand scheme of One Piece, but, oh, Chopper. Mm, he's got the biggest heart. He really does. But the moment when he's given the mushroom to him and he's made a, a miraculous cure, when he tells Dr. Kira what he did and the mushroom... Uh, and she says it's poisonous. Whoever eats it dies within the hour. I was like, oh, Chopper. And it goes back to the details again because we had Chopper say the skull and crossbones pirate flag as something that makes miracles happen and makes the impossible possible. So when he sees the skull and crossbones in the book, it means death. It signifies death. But he thought it meant the impossible becomes possible. Ah, uh, Oh, it hurts. It hurts. And Chopper's reaction, he's crying. Oh, Chopper, I just want to protect him. I just want to protect him. Ugh. And Dr. Kira is quite... She's hard to get an opinion on, honestly, because she is very selfish, but at the same time, I feel like there is a heart in there as well. She will do the right thing, even though she's a damn that she will need to be paid for things. She won't do anything for free. I mean, obviously we see that she does take Chopper in, and she does teach him all the medical things that he's learned now. But yeah, she is a, a bit of a hard one to read. Way more complex than I'm giving her credit for, honestly. Oh, but just... Oh, I went back to the start of the chapter. And when Chopper's just so proud of himself. He's so proud of himself. Like, look at his little face. And the doctor's like, I'm feeling better already. Thank you, Chopper. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it hurts so much. Where's the wine? Quite honestly, I feel like I would drink poisonous medicine as well just to make Chopper happy. I really think I would. But it does look like the doctor managed to achieve what he wanted and what he's been working for the past 30 years. He got the reaction he needed in order to bloom these cherry blossoms on Drum Island. Although I don't recall seeing cherry blossoms at the start of this. And this was, I think, six years before, just judging by Cura's age. She was 133 in the flashback, but she's 139 now. So yeah, six years. Six years have passed since then. Oh, poor Chopper crying and all the snot that's coming out of his nose and... Oh, oh and the way that Dr. Kira was beating Chopper up. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh. He's fine now. It's a miracle cure. Oh. <laughs> It's tearing out my heart again. Stop it. A moment of silence, please, for Dr. Hiraluk. Get yourself some wine as well if you need some. Well, at least Chopper didn't actually kill him. Dr. Hiraluk blew himself up before the poisonous mushroom could take effect. Uh, it's still not ideal. <laughs> it's still not ideal. But, oh, poor Chopper. And poor Drum Island as well, honestly. They've been through the ringer. They have had a really bad history. And they need somebody to be in charge. Like Dalton. Dalton actually cares for the people. And he wants to protect them. But the king, King Wapol, is just so evil and so bad that all he cares about is himself. He doesn't care about anybody in this village like Dalton does. Make Dalton king. That's what I say. Make him king. Oh, I just feel so deflated. <laughs> it's really deflated me. But what Dr. Hiraluk says before he dies, though. Dr. Hiraluk calls Chopper his son. He tells Dalton, he warns Dalton that a monster will come. Don't hurt him. He's my son. Oh. And, when, oh, and the speech he gives as well before he dies, saying, when does a man actually die? So when he's shot in the heart with a pistol, when he's stricken with a deadly disease, when he eats soup from a deadly mushroom. No, it's when he is forgotten. So he's not really, I mean, he is dead. He blew up. He's dead. But he's not really dead, you know? And I think that's the message that the memory of them will always live on as long as you hold them in your heart and you continue to do things in their name and oh i don't know how much more i can speak <laughs> it's funny how i can care so much for a quack doctor isn't it wapal needs to be stopped he does we end the chapter being back from the flashback so we're back in present day with luffy giving wapal the gum gum bullet move. So we're going to get the fight, I think. We're going to get the fight. We're going to see Wapal get his ass handed to him. 
at least he better do. And hopefully Drum Island will be restored and happy again with all of the doctors that they need. I finished volume 16, so now we are on volume 17, which is thicker than the previous two volumes again. I actually need to double check what chapter I'm reading up to again, I've forgotten already. Yeah, 154, so that's in the idea of this whole volume actually. Nine more chapters, nine more chapters to go and it's already torn at my heart. It's time for the Munch Munch Factory. <laughs> also, I love the fact that Django won his dance competition. Look at him, he's Lord of the Dance. I'm actually strangely proud. <laughs> Even though he freaked me out during the Super Village arc when he would walk backwards, he was a scary fool. I will say that. I'm actually quite proud of him, the fact that he took home the crown. He's Lord of the Dance. Good on him. Anyway, the Munch Munch Factory. We have some <laughs> strange things coming. I feel so bad for Robson White Walkie, you know, the hippo, because Luffy does knock him through the sky with King Wapol on him. The poor hippo, poor Robson. At least that's what the English translation says it is. Robson White Walkie. Hopefully that's correct. And he's just like, moo, moo, oh. Please tell me that Robson gets some justice and he gets treated with some respect because I feel so bad for him. Oh, poor thing. Anyway, yes, we are back in the fight. It seems like they do have some bad organization skills because Sanji does try to attack Kurumarumo. Well, Kurumarumo uses his hair and flicks it at them and he uses a special move called Static Cling and it sticks to them and they can't get it off. And it's hilarious to see Sanji and Chopper get muddled up with that. And it's great because this is the first fight with Chopper as part of the sort of team. So to see him already kind of failing a little bit and to see that dynamic not go to plan, he already fits right in. I love the little interlude as well where Sanji tells Wapol that Luffy's gone to get something warm to wear during this whole fight. And he's just like, oh, Luffy's gone off, you know, he'll be back. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then to see Luffy get Nami's jacket and he's like, oh, that isn't cool. And Nami's like, it's better than nothing, you know. So either he's wearing Nami's jacket as he comes back to this fight. It's just funny. It's so funny. Great piece of fight as well when Sanji tells Luffy to grab hold of his foot and then uses his own spinning kick to propel Luffy forward. I always love moments where, even though I love it when they kind of mess up, I love it when they do actually work so well together because they really do. They are like glue. They work together so well, even though they don't do an amazing job all the time. It's just a gem of a moment, honestly, and it's just so effective. Although I I'm still feel so bad for Robson. Please tell me Robson is okay. Please tell me he comes back and they look after him because he needs to get away from King Wapol. I want him to find happiness. I'm also really interested to see what the Munch Munch Factory is. I can't take that whole concept seriously, <laughs> but I'm sure it's a really formidable move. Okay, it's kind of cool that the things that Wapol eats becomes his flesh and blood. <laughs> it's a little bizarre as well seeing it materialize, but the fact that he eats a house and then he can become a house, bizarre. Bizarre or fiction. And then he ate one of his men, I was like, well, he eats Chess and Kurumarumo, and they kind of get merged into one. I don't know if they are actually merged because Luffy's like, oh, they're riding piggyback, that's so cool. <laughs> and Sanji has to shout, that's not cool, it's stupid. But it's like the next level of the boss, isn't it? When you're fighting a boss in a video game. Say, for instance, God of War Ragnarok, one of the very first battles is Thor, and there are like three phases to his boss battle. And honestly, I was getting so sick. I was dying left, right, and center. It was only the second boss. And yeah, there were three phases to the boss battle. And that's what this feels like with Wapol. I feel like the house, the Munch Munch Factory thing is the next level of this boss battle. So that's really cool. I can really see this as a video game format. I'm trying to read as much of this as possible because I'm desperate to play the One Piece Odyssey game that's coming out in January. I want to play it so bad, but I can't until I'm caught up and I don't plan on being caught up until mid next year. Like I'm trying to go through each arc, but there's so many arcs that I need to catch up on. There's just no way I want to catch up by January. So I am sad about that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to envision this is a video game and I'm playing it in my head. Have you noticed that I really love video games? <laughs> but yeah, not really much to say more about this chapter. The battle is on. There's been like little bits of fight, but it's essentially just the next phase of Wapol and his evolution like a Pokemon. Oh, speaking of Pokemon actually, so proud of Ash Ketchum for finally becoming the very best, the Pokemon master that he's always destined to be, that he's trained 25 years for. 
Funny how he gets the Pokemon Master title before Luffy finds the One Piece, am I right? Oh, and Dalton's alive. Dalton is alive. He was just frozen. I'm so happy. I would have thrown hands if he was actually dead. But Dalton, he says that if he has to become a villain to beat Wapol, then he will. So I'm kind of a bit scared for him and his sanity at the minute. However, I'm so happy that he is alive and there's somebody fighting for Drum Island. Although, you know, Luffy and the Straw Hats and Chopper are fighting for the island. It's nice to have Dalton, who just seems to live and breathe Drum Island and somebody who's from Drum Island to defend it. And yeah, Kira is also kind of defending it as well. She's there, she's present for the fight and I think she's ready to defend, but she hasn't really thrown any fists yet. So I'm interested to see how her fight style is, if she does get her hands dirty or what. But yeah, lots of interesting things happening in the minute. Loving this bloody arc, I really am. I feel like I have my favourite new panel now, and it's this one. Seeing Luffy hold up the flag that Wapol has tried to destroy, the pirate flag that it tries to destroy. Even though it's a symbol of faith, it's a symbol of the pirates. Pirates aren't easily taken down. Luffy, the Straw Hats, Chopper, they're not backing down. They are here to stay. They are formidable. And I love it. And I loved it when Luffy told Chopper that he has a friend. When Chess... Chess Monimo? Chess Marimo. When they try to intimidate Chopper and tell him that he was isolated and lonely and he doesn't have a friend. And then if he just comes out from the sky, he's like, you have a friend Pfft, right here. And it's just like, oh, love it. I love how the font of Chess Marimo's speech is a little bit different as well. It kind of blends, oh, I'll get out of the way. Kind of blends the two writing together. So it, it feels like two people talking at once, which it is. It just stands out and I can hear it, you know? So the fight's still ongoing with Wapol and Chopper is about to whoop his ass. I can feel it. I can feel he's about to whoop his ass. Back in the village, though, Dalton is better and Usopp has offered to take him all the way up to the mountain. Even though Zoro's like, just stand aside and puts him on top of him and he's going to carry him. It was really nice to see Usopp try and stand up and do something useful. It's always nice to see that happen when he does that because he is still a bit of a coward, but I like his growth. I'm liking his progress. I like that he's taking baby steps to show his strength in the group. But honestly, this panel, I'm just flicking through again, this panel is just, even that image of Luffy there, chills, absolute chills. Oh, I love it. It's so nice to see Wapol focusing so much on the pirate flag and trying to destroy it, and he just can't destroy it because he can't destroy our pirates, he can't destroy our friends. So take that. Okay, not a lot to say about this chapter at all. It really was just a fight between Chopper and Wapol. The only thing we really learn is that Chopper doesn't just have four transformations, he has seven. Chopper has crafted, or well, Chopper's just like a brilliant kind of genius, really. He's managed to come up with a way of doing seven transformations. He has a lot of abilities. He's very strong as well. I feel like he is definitely going to be one of the best additions to the Straw Hats, considering he has so much medical knowledge. He can fight. He can literally fight. His fight against Wapol was really good. But not a lot to say other than that. I really, I don't really have much of an opinion on this chapter. Other than, look at how cute he is after he wins against Wapol. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to cope with Chopper in the future, honestly, because I'll just want to squeeze him. I really will. Why did they have to introduce an incredibly cute character? This always happens with me. I attach myself to a cute character and I can't ever see them any other way than just cute and I just want to squeeze them to death. It's the same with my boys, Ash and Tobu. Don't know if you actually saw them there, but I just want to squeeze them all the time until they pop. <laughs> Nami's back. I am so happy she is back to her old self. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. The fact that she sees an opportunity to get money out of Luffy while everything's going on, she's just being chased by Wapol, who managed to make it inside the castle, and she's running away, and he ends up eating himself and becoming thin again, and I mean, <laughs> I mean, if only that would work on me. Like, his powers are so strange, but there are some parts of it where I'm just like, okay, I respect that. Like, when he says he's gonna try and get into the weapons chamber thing, and he's gonna eat all the weapons, and then the weapons will become part of his body, like, that is so cool. Like, that is a really good power. Even though it, it does sound silly sometimes, like, munch munch factory. Like, shouting these things out before doing a move, is one, fantastic, and I love it, but two, sometimes it comes across as quite silly. I like it though, I do like it. But yeah, my favourite part was Nami saying to Luffy, hey, you tore my jacket, and she seems angry at first, and then Luffy's like, I'm sorry, like, he threw bombs at me. And she's like, that's okay, I knew you would get it damaged. It just means you'll have to pay me for it, and like three times interest, so that's a hundred thousand berries you owe me. And I'm just like, when is Nami's hustle gonna stop? 
because apparently an infection and almost dying does not stop Nami from trying to get money out of people, especially her friends. I just love Nami so much. Like, oh, her personality just shines so much. Oh, Lord. The only couple of other things of note in this chapter is really pretty much the end where Luffy is confronting Wapol and tells him just because you're a king doesn't mean anything. It's not all about power. And at the same time, we have Chopper saying Luffy called him a friend. And that's really affected Chopper. That's really taken to his heart. Oh my god, I really, he is gonna join the Straw Hats, right? I really want him to join. He does, right? I, I want him so bad to be part of this team. I just feel like it'll be so helpful for him. I feel like it'll be great for his self-esteem. I think it'll be great for him exploring and seeing the world and just having friends. Oh, I'll be sad that he'll have to say goodbye to Kira, but other than that, I feel like this will do him the world of good. I keep thinking the fight with Wapol is over and then it's not. Oh my god. Well, that was a snore and a half. Gosh. Yeah, I think Luffy's taken down Wapol at the end of this. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like Chopper needs to take him down. Or Dalton. I feel like one of those two need to actually take him down. I think maybe Luffy's just blasted him into the hemisphere. However, I feel like we might see him come crashing back down to Earth and maybe Chopper or Dalton will take care of it. Because Dalton is on his way there now with Usopp and Vivi and Zoro and a few other people who want to defend Drum Island. So I feel like if Luffy has taken him out at this moment before Dalton's even arrived, I feel a bit bad for Dalton, honestly. And it just shows how much of a coward Walpole is because as he says Luffy's about to attack, he's trying to bargain with him and beg with him not to attack and is offering him to be vice king in order for Luffy to stop. So it really does show that he values his own life and his own self-worth above everyone else. And it was nice to see the reassurance through Dalton's perspective because we do get little bits of flashbacks with Dalton at this time. Things we've already seen, but it's nice to reinforce his morals and the message that I feel like this arc has given us, that having a tyrannical ruler like Wapol is nothing. It means nothing when there is a beaten heart within the community and the beaten heart is always stronger than the cruel and vindictive heart of a tyrannical ruler, essentially. I feel like that's what this arc has done so well, is to provide that message. And it's great as well because the contrast between Wapol and Luffy, Luffy is, you know, he's the captain, but he doesn't ever take his station or his status above everyone else. He never uses it to belittle anyone else or to exert power over his crew. I feel like he treats everyone so equally and that's what makes the Straw Hat so strong. And then we have Wapol, who is just an absolute menace to society. But a good little force, well, I did really end up enjoying him as a character. So I feel like now we're probably just wrapping up this arc, which is great because I feel like this has just been such a good arc. I really enjoyed it so much. It reminded me of a couple of the arcs in the East Blue Saga, especially when we were figuring out a lot of people's backstories, like Nami's and Usopp's and even Zoro's, and even Sanji's as well. Like, it was nice to have that come back. So yeah, it's full steam ahead to the finale of the Drum Island arc. This felt like a very transitional chapter. Not a lot happened. Well, we're working towards getting Chopper as part of the Straw Hats. I don't know if he actually said yeah at the end. I think he did because we had Luffy just shouting at him, just shut up and come with us because Chopper's like, I can't come with you, I'm a reindeer, I'm not human. But yeah, it looks like Chopper's crying at the end there. And then all you see is yeah at the end. I think that's Chopper saying yeah, he's gonna join them. And if it is, I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna be so, so happy. My favorite part of this chapter was Nami. I think Nami like really came through in this arc, even though she was unconscious for a lot of it and she was ill for a lot of it, just, Oh, she just shows how amazing she is. But she does bargain with Dr. Kira and she has the key that Wapol has to open the weapons place. And Dr. Kura is after it and she thinks that it's gone off with Wapol. But then Nami's like, well, if you let us go and you forgive our debt, then he has the keys. So you can always rely on Nami to just deliver. And it's so hard as well. I, I don't know who my favourite straw hat is. I think it's still Luffy just on principle alone because he's just amazing. But like Nami is like so close. When I say how much of an impact they all have on the actual story, on the group dynamics, when their personality shines through, Nami has just been, ugh, I just can't praise Nami enough. I hope there is a scene with Chopper and the villagers though before Chopper goes because he has been 
called a monster a lot. He's been frowned on. He's been, you know, kicked and beaten. And he's been pushed away from everyone there. But if he gets an apology from the villagers, and it looks like Dalton is going to be that kind of bridge between the villagers and Chopper and give that apology that I think Chopper has always needed to feel included, then I think that's where we're headed because I still have two chapters to read. But there was a lot of running away from Chopper in this one, away from Dalton, away from Luffy. So hopefully Chopper does come face to face with everyone soon and then he can leave. It's, it reminds me of Usopp's story and how he was always you know telling lies and things but then he finally told the truth and the villagers respected him and came to like him by the time Usopp had to leave. So if we can have that with Chopper before Chopper leaves that would be fantastic. I am going to miss this island. This chapter reminded me of just how great this island is and how much I've enjoyed this arc so I am going to miss it. I was surprised at first with Dr. Kira's response to Chopper wanting to join the Straw Hats. I don't quite understand why she reacted the way she did. I know she says that she does an ITF or farewells and she actually does want Chopper to go in in all of that but it just, it felt odd the way she reacted. She was very aggressive <laughs> and she could have got him to go away without being that way. You know even if she hates ITF or farewells she could have just went okay bye and that would have been it rather than the kind of show of anger that she showed which you know it, it, she is a confusing character. She is complex but yeah I, I don't quite understand her full reasoning of acting the way she did when Chopper said, I'm going to join them. And she calls him ungrateful and, and all of that. So I, I yeah, I, I still don't understand why she went that route. But yeah, she does end up setting off these cannons with the dust thing that the doctor had given her before he died. And it's made the, these pink snowfalls, which means that it's the cherry blossoms, I think. So that is quite something. It's quite a spectacle to have a send off to Drum Island. I'm reading the last chapter now. This is the goodbye to Drum Island, I think. So it's a nice farewell. And to say that it wasn't just a lie that the doctor said to make Chopper feel better before he died. It was actually something that he'd worked so hard on in order to help Drum Island and the villagers there. And it's actually done something. He's actually done it and it's not a lie. And Chopper can now kind of leave and leave that part behind him and not have the whole history there holding him back and not to have any questions as well whether or not things that the doctor said to him were a lie or not. It was really nice. It was really good. Like, we are on a cool down after the boss battle with Wapol. And yeah, not really much to say about this chapter either. Just that Chopper is definitely joining them and I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. Oh, right. Okay. I have questions. I have questions. Who is Ace? Who is Ace? And why didn't the people of Drum Island tell Luffy that Ace had said that he was going to meet him in Alabasta in, what, within the next 10 days? Who is this Ace? Also, Chopper didn't get the send-off that, say, Usopp had from Syrup Village. We do have Dalton talk to his, his men, and it seems like they respect Chopper now, and, you know, he's going to be welcomed back with open arms if he ever comes back. But yeah, there was a strange figure that came to Drum Island before Luffy got there, and his name is Ace. Who is Ace? What is his plan? What's his agenda? Hmm, don't actually answer that. I don't want spoilers. Yeah, he'll be in Alabaster for 10 days. What if Luffy misses him? What if it's really important? What is this even regarding? What is this about? And also Kira is looking at the gold day Roger thing, but they're like, you mean gold Roger? So there is a gold day Roger, not gold Roger. I need to go back to volume one. Yeah, it was Gold Roger at the start, but Gold Day Roger, what, well, like Monkey Day Luffy? What does the day stand for? I actually don't really know what the day stands for. Does it even tell you what the day stands for for Luffy? No, it just says Monkey Day Luffy, villager boy. Okay, I never actually thought to question what the day stands for. And there was something about Gold Day Roger, Gold Roger, and Luffy in Logtown. There was a connection there that I found quite interesting. And I feel like we are heading towards more answers about Goldie Roger. Am I saying it right? Goldie Roger? Goldie? <laughs> I don't know. What's the connection there? And we've also met Mr. Two, which is quite scary. I almost forgot about the Baroque works because they haven't really been present in the Drum Island arc. But now we're heading full speed Alabaster. The next arc is the Alabaster arc. So I'm assuming we will have some kind of resolution or some like big fallout with the Baroque Works agents. And we also had Mr. Crocodile at the end of this. And the next chapter, which is the start of the Alabaster arc, is called Sir Crocodile the Pirate. 
So I believe we're going to meet him. Oh, I'm scared. So it seems like I have more questions than answers in this one. Although it is really nice to see Chopper be welcomed in by the Straw Hats. He's having so much fun already. And to see that his bag of medical surprise was already on the sleigh. So Kira already knew that he was going to join. It was just so sweet. It was so nice, so wholesome. It was a really good chapter. It was a good chapter. I'm dying to know who Ace is though. If me meeting the previous new characters is any indication, I've ended up loving a lot of the new characters and I find them so interesting. Like I'm still interested in Miss All Sunday. Like, can you explain your story please? And then Ace in Mr. Crocodile, there's just so many characters that I need to know more. And now Goldie Roger, like there's more to him than meets the eye. There's more that I don't know and I need to know right now. But now I need to reconfigure it and rejig the ratings for all of the previous arcs because when I've been looking back on them I've been realizing I would probably give that one higher now in hindsight I would probably give that one lower and I had a bit of a crisis at the end of the little garden arc when I was trying to figure out ratings and if you guys saw that you would have seen that I need to do some jigging around I've decided to give half ratings so 0.5s are in because I realized that in order to differentiate between a lot of the arcs I need to introduce this new system essentially so let's go through the arc ratings so far and the new ratings for a lot of them I have changed some of them not all of them but yes these are the new ratings so for Romance Dawn I have given an 8 out of 10 for Orange Town I've given it 6 out of 10 for the Syrup Village arc I've given it 5 out of 10 for the Barate arc I've given it 8 out of 10 for the Arlong Park arc I bumped it up to a 9 out of 10 because it's still my favorite one so far the Log Town arc I've given 6 out of 10 Reverse Mountain arc also 6 out of 10 the Whiskey Peak arc has a 7 out of 10 and the Little Garden arc I gave 7.5 which I think I've changed from the 8 I gave it in the original video and then for the Drum Island arc that I've just finished I'm gonna give it a really high 8.5 really loved it I think it's my second favorite arc just in terms of the setting the introduction of new characters the progression of the story the world building I just loved it the level of enjoyment was incredible too definitely my favorite since our long park definitely and just one of my favorite arcs so far so now I'm really excited for Alabasta because the amount of people who said Alabasta is the best arc in the Alabasta saga oh you guys have me so hyped up so hyped up, I'm so excited. But yeah, those are my new ratings. That's the first 10 arcs in One Piece done as well. So for me, having only started the series less than two months ago, I'm quite happy with that. So next will be the Alabaster arc. I'm going to be doing that at the end of this month. And if you're watching this way in the future, then it may already be up. I will leave a link to the One Piece playlist in the description box if you want to check out all of my One Piece videos. Then yeah, please do so. But yeah, that is the Drum Island arc. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more One Piece. Don't forget to leave all the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the Drum Island arc, your thoughts on my thoughts. Did you like the video? Anything at all, leave all the comments down below. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for support my channel if you'd like to try my patreon or follow me on any social media then all the links are down in the description box but yeah thanks so much for watching i hope i will see you in the next video bye